With the addition of Tenokai and the new melee arcanes, melee is actually really fun right now. And this is coming from someone who does not play melee often in Warframe. And of course, this has motivated me to make a top 10 melee weapons video. The weapons in this list are in no particular order. If you don't know by now, melees now have melee arcane adapters and we have some very strong melee arcanes. Plus, now we have a new system called Tenokai, which in short has a small chance of proccing, and when it does, you can heavy attack with no cost to combo counter, so it's basically a free heavy attack while you build up or sustain your combo. Now, as per usual, this is my opinion, yours may differ, I would like to hear yours in the comments below. Just a few disclaimers here, the weapons I chose on this list are more catered towards pairing them with Tenokai and the new melee arcanes. Sure, they work completely fine without them, but I found these ones to be particularly fun with Tenokai. Also, the weapons on this list are catered for more mid to late game players, but I have tried my best to include some alternatives for the baby Tenos who are watching this video. So just keep that in mind. I have done a bit of testing with Tenokai and I have found some interesting things with this new mechanic. I haven't seen many content creators do a Tenokai video explaining which weapons are good for it, which ones aren't. Pause. As I was writing the script and I said this, the Kenjineer posted a video on Tenokai, so go and check that one out. With that being said, I still would like to use this video as a platform to ask you guys if you would like me to make a Tenokai video, even though it's been some time since its release. Comment down below and if I see quite a few of you asking, I will consider making a video. Before we get into the list, just like I did with the top 10 primaries, let's get the OP weapons out of the way. You already know what they're going to be, Glaive Prime, Serata and the Zorus, the three Glaives. The majority of the player base already knows, so I'm not going to blabber on and waste time on the video. Glaive Prime is the Slash King, although with Tenenkai the Glaives don't work particularly well, it's a bit weird, but you can sometimes proc it with the heavy attack or when you throw it. Here is the build I run here. For the Arcanes, it's dependent on your build, but melee fortification is very nice for hull tanking, melee retaliation, or anything that you have available. Here is the Serata build. The Serata is the Corpus Killer and is a very, very good budget option and is extremely powerful. This is the end game setup. Here is the earlier game setup as this is an MR7 Doja weapon, so it's quite easy to obtain for newer players. I have made an in-depth guide on both the Glaive and the Serata. If you would like to check that out, I will put the links in the description as well. Now, the Zorus is also an early game weapon given to you after you complete Proteus Quest. I personally don't like it, but I will still say I cannot deny the fact that this is a very strong weapon that is given to you very early in the game. And honestly, it carries you from early star chart all the way to late game steel path. We first have our very early game setup with just four mods. Then here is something that you can work towards when you're in the early to mid game. And then for the late game players, we have a very, very strong synergy with melee influence. The Zorus has innate electricity. So pairing this with melee influence allows you to just delete rooms. It's broken how much damage the setup does. You can build this with either flat electricity or you can go corrosive to help with the armored enemies. Because it still procs electricity and spreads, the Zorus has forced electricity proc, so even though it will have corrosive, you will still apply electricity. Here is a setup here. If you don't have the primed versions, just use the normal. I will say this now because I don't want to repeat myself in the video for all of the builds. Two things. One, if you don't have the primed versions, just use the normal versions. And two, my builds are guidelines. I show what works for me. If you find something better, by all means, go for it. You don't need to follow my builds exactly. You play the game how you want to. All right, let's get into it. The first weapon on this list will be the Prisma Omer. Now, I have seen this weapon around and a few people have mentioned it to me, but a community member of mine, Oddity, suggested the Prisma Omer to me. And this weapon is insanely strong with melee influence. Like, insanely strong. The Prisma Omer is a Tonfer that is MR12 and is obtained through Barrow. Now you can buy it from other players and I will admit it is very pricey, but worth it in every way. If you really want to, the normal Omer is MR8 and is a lot cheaper. For lower level content, if you follow the same build, it will do more than enough damage for lower level content, especially if you get your hands on melee influence. The way melee influence works is on melee electricity status effect, 20% chance for elemental melee status effects to apply to enemies within 20 meters for 18 seconds. This cannot refresh while active. So this means if you apply, let's say viral radiation and electricity, for example, when it procs, you would spread all of those elements to enemies in the range. 
It's a very strong arcane for those weapons that have innate electricity or have high status chance and you just simply mod for electricity. In the Omer's case, it has innate electricity, so of course this thing just is going to simply shred. The build I use for it is this one right here. This is the end game build. When it comes to Tenakai, this is entirely up to you. Personally, it's between Dreamer's Wrath, Conditions Perfection, and Opportunities Reach. You pick one that tickles your fancy. For lower level players, you can use something like this. If you can get your hands on Tenakai, then go for it and of course melee influence even if it's a rank 0 or rank 1 melee influence. Please bear in mind that you don't need Tenokai or melee influence for this weapon to work and this applies to all the weapons on this list. Tenokai and melee arcanes just give it that extra juice for melees. I highly recommend the Prisma Omer, it's definitely worth the price and getting it you will literally shred everything. Plus it is super satisfying seeing the electricity procs against all the enemies and it does really good damage even to the new boss as well. Moving on to the next weapon which will be the Quasis. The Quasis is a war fan but what makes it so unique is when you heavy attack it shoots out daggers that do some hefty boy bleed damage. So the Quasis is a really good single target killer for those tougher boys and will take care of the easy targets. And if you pair this with Tenakai, well, you can heavy attack way more often and scale the slash procs like crazy. So the Quasis rarely benefits from Tenokai. It's an MR8 weapon which can be obtained through Deimos bounties. Pairing this weapon with a primer or a frame that can apply many status effects like Varuna or Citrine can prove incredibly lethal. Simply adding Viral will suffice with the amount of damage you get from the heavy attack bleed ticks. So using a Panzer or a normal primer will work quite nicely with this weapon. When it comes to the right Tenakai mod, it depends. Dreamer's Wrath is really good or even Discipline's Merit to heavy attack way more often. The endgame setup I run is this one. I usually run melee duplicate with this, but of course, it's an expensive ass arcane. Not many people have this, so please just adjust the build or use whatever arcane you have available. Animosity is also very good and melee exposure is also very nice if you are running a caster frame. If you're not running duplicate, run Sacrificial Steel instead of True Steel for more crit chance. I use Vote of Onslaught for the stance, and this build is focused on flat damage and boosting the slash procs. The cheaper build for low MR players is as follows. Again, if you can get your hands on Tenakai, use whichever one you have available. Overall, the Quasis is really fun for Demolishers and Thraxes in Void Cascade. Also, it's just fun to use Warfans from time to time. Alternatively, we have the Gunson Prime. Here is the endgame build I usually run. It's pretty much the same framework if you're interested in the Gunson Prime, instead, which is Wisps Warfans. But the Quasis is something different and really fun. I highly recommend it, especially with Tenokai. Moving on to the next weapon, which will be the Inodim. Now, this dagger pole shtick has insane range. What makes the Inodim even better now is if you pair it with the new Opportunities Reach, while well, you have some really good range with your heavy attacks. The Inodim has always been very strong. It's an OG and Khan weapon that is MR14 and obtained through Cavalero in the Zaramon. The evolutions I went for are Bladed Harmony, Skyborne Hunter, Incarn and Imago, and Armed Inspiration. This dagger has a hefty 7.8 meter range with primed reach and the Incarnan activated. Pairing it with Opportunity's reach will increase its heavy attack range to around 8 to 9-ish meters. Tenokai is a bit weird in the sense of the range of the heavy attacks from Tenokai specifically. It unfortunately doesn't stack so you don't get like a nice 11 meter range of heavy attacks. But with the Inodim having such a high base range, it does allow for the heavy attacks from Tenokai to have way more range than other melees. The end game setup I use is this. This build utterly shreds everything in its path. I have fallen in love with the inner dim with Tenokai. Prime reach is up to you. I just like the large amount of range. In terms of the arcanes, fortification, exposure, and animosity are really good options. Then we have the cheaper build for those of you who don't have primed. For me personally, if you don't have primed reach, I don't think it's worth using the base reach. That's just my opinion. I could be wrong, but if you want extra range, then go ahead and you can use normal reach. We have another bonus build here, slap on electricity and melee influence, and of course, everything just gets deleted. This is a really fun setup to use with the Inodim. You honestly can't go wrong with the Incarnate weapons. They are super powerful, and the Inodim in particular is really fun at the moment. I highly suggest it. This thing melts. Moving on to the Guandao Prime. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, so Warframe has added auto melee. Guandao Prime equals meat grinder already, and it's just spinny, spinny, spinny. 
Add Discipline's Merit, every 4 hits equals Tenakai. Add Berserker Fury or Primed Fury if you pick that from the Login Reward. Equip Vault with a lot of strength, press his 2, hold E, and um, yeah, right. I don't think this will ever get old, I mean you just can't beat this. You obviously don't need Vault for this, but it's super fun with them, let's, let's be honest. The Guandao Prime has always been a fun weapon and it is an MR12 weapon. I do want to say as an alternative, if you are watching this and you are not MR12, you can use the Edun, which is the Deveri Melee, which can literally be obtained at MR0. They are very close in terms of their stats and basically are the same weapon. However, the Edun has a heavy attack in which you yeet the pole at enemies. So it's unfortunately not the best for Tenokai, but a really good weapon for the Guandao type of weapons. You can follow the exact same builds here from the Guandao or use it on the Edun. The Guandao Prime is a slash beast and relies on fast spinning attacks. The setup we use is as follows. The Arcanes or whatever you have available. For Tenokai, Discipline's Merit is really fun for those super fast heavy attacks. This setup is focused on buffing our slash procs and heavy attacks. Here is the cheaper build here. Honestly, you can't go wrong with the Guandao Prime. It's super satisfying and pairing it with a Primer makes this weapon melt everything. Personally, the Guandao is one of the best with Tenokai. Moving on to the next weapon, which is the Prados. The Prados is also an OG and Khan weapon. It's an MR14 weapon acquired from Cavalera in the Zaramon. Here is the thing. The Prados is a Tonfa weapon. You get the Cronin Prime and then you get the Prados. These two are commonly compared. The Cronin Prime does in theory do more damage, but not by a drastic amount that you have to use the Cronin. After the addition of Tenokai and Melee Arcanes, I personally say the Prados is just so much better. I use this thing all the time because of the utility it gives from the evolutions. It does more than enough damage and offers way more than the Cronin Prime. The evolutions that I went for are Drifting Grace, Shockwave Synergy, Evolved Ascension and Universal Readiness. The speed this weapon gives for any frame you are running is just invaluable. I love using the Prados to speed up my missions and to use it every now and then. The Parker Velocity is just too good. For the setup that I go for, I use this one here. Opportunities reach for Tenakai and then whatever arcane you have available. I would recommend Melee Fortification. I don't have a budget build, it's basically the exact same thing just without the Prime versions. I do have an alternate build which focuses purely on crit and heavy attack damage as well. Overall, the utility from Prados is unmatched. If you prefer the Chrono Prime, then by all means you can use the exact same build here, but the Prados can just be used as a movement stat stick even if you don't like using melee. Really worth getting when you hit MR14. One of my favorite melees to use right now. Moving on to the sixth weapon on this list, which will be the Venka Prime. These claws allow you to feel like Wolverine in Warframe, with its unique trait allowing you to go up to 13x combo instead of the usual 12, this thing becomes a slash demon. And when you pair it with Tenokai, well, you get some really smooth heavy attack animations. It just feels like you're gracefully committing genocide through missions. I was hitting millions of bleed ticks with the Venka Prime, and honestly, it's super satisfying to use. It's also a late game weapon, MR14. Again, it's a little pricey in terms of platinum value, but worth it. If claws are your thing, then the Venka Prime is a perfect option for that. However, if you are a lower MR player and watching this, the base Venka is MR4, which is really early and they are certainly capable of doing star chart comfortably. For the endgame build, I run this setup here. You have two options. You can either run it with Viral, or you can drop Viral and run Reach for more range and then Weeping Wounds for more status chance as you stack up your combo. The Viral setup is for those who don't like priming, and the non-viral setup is for those who normally like to prime enemies. When it comes to Tenakai, either use Dreamer's Wrath or Opportunities Reach. And the Arcanes are flexible to what you have available. I am aware that not everyone has melee duplicate because I know the comments are going to come after me in this video. For the baby Tenos watching this, this is a simple 4 mod build for the base banker which will suffice in Star Charge. Swap out Fury for Berserker Fury when you get it. So the banker is a really strong option. You'll be doing fat amounts of slash procs with the Prime version and it's not a bad early game weapon for non-Primed alternative. And that's the Venka. Moving on to the legendary Nakana Prime. It's no secret, this Katana has been part of the top melees for the longest time. The Nakana Prime is honestly one of the most satisfying weapons to use and it does stupid bleed damage. It's also worth noting if you don't like the Nakana Prime because of the hefty boy price, the Zor version is actually really good. 
even this gear jati isn't a bad weapon as well which is given to you for free so you can copy the same build framework for those weapons if you want a cheaper version with tenokai added the nakana does stupid damage if you pair it with melee exposure and weeping wounds well i don't think there is really anything that will stand in your way with this weapon Another really cool thing which I just discovered now about the stance blind justice is if you block and melee while walking forward you will dash forward around 10 meters. This is actually a really fun way to move around. The end game build I use is this one here. This build is focused on heavy attacks as well as stacking up your slash procs with weeping wounds. Condition overload for priming of course. I use melee exposure because it's really easy to sustain that corrosive damage and with the addition of weeping wounds you'll be procking corrosive really easy helping you do more flat damage when you heavy attack to armored targets and because you drop the armor a lot your heavy attack damage is going to scale a lot the cheaper version will just be no primed mods honestly i don't have much more to say about the nakana it's a katana it's super satisfying and a lot of people know it already the majority of people watching this will be no stranger to this weapon it's the perfect choice for your normal day-to-day -day content moving on to the hate incarnate now the hate incarnate is part of the new incarnate weapons what makes the hate incarnate so cool is when you get a 6x combo you get the incarnate form which shoots out explosive heat blades that apply heat and impact because these projectiles apply heat pairing this with melee exposure again will strip more armor because of corrosive allowing you to do millions of damage when you use Tenokai, plus this weapon already does really high slash damage which ignores armor anyway. Even before the incarnate form, this thing does damage. So if you're watching this prior to Steel Path and want to use the base one, absolutely go for it. This thing will shred Star Chart. You can pre-build it, wait for Steel Path and farm the incarnate version when you get to Circuit. The Hate is an MR8 weapon which you get from Stalker in Star Chart. The evolutions I went for are Swordsman's Flourish, Resolute Force and Absolute Dominion. For the end game build, we use this setup here, focusing on heavy attacks and increasing your bleed ticks with a bane. Condition overload for priming. I went for opportunities reach, but again, this is flexible to what you have or what you like. The arcane I went for is melee exposure for that extra corrosive damage. The budget build looks as follows. If you can't afford all the former, remember the budget builds don't need as much former as I have put in. Just use the main four mods. Flat damage, crit chance, crit damage, and attack speed. Then add on mods as you start to invest in the weapon and add more former into it. The hate is a really strong choice, in Karnan or not. I would highly recommend this weapon for Steel Path and non-Steel Path players. Moving on to the next weapon, which will be the legendary Ceramic Dagger in Karnan. The Ceramic Dagger is one of, if not the best stat stick melees in Warframe right now because of the incarnate form allowing you to have a base 7x combo. One of the incarnate forms gives you 100 combo when you kill enemies with your primary. So yes, you have to charge it with 100 primary kills, but still, the simple fact that you can get it to 100 combo plus the 20 from the next evolution is very rare to say the least. So this weapon is more of a stat stick, it's a very good stat stick for Korra and Atlas. You can use this weapon for normal melee genocide, it does work but this weapon shines more for stat sticks. The evolutions I went for is Gun and Blade, a Death Reflexes and Absolute Valor. The build looks as follows, for Korra this will work really well because every time you cast an ability it procs melee exposure. The Ceramic Dagger is really good for Atlas and any other frame which requires a stat stick like Baruch as well. You can use Dreamer's Wrath or any Tenokai, but if it's a stat stick, you don't particularly need one. Or alternatively, if you'd like to use this as a normal melee and have the juicy 7x combo up all the time, then you can use the same build or use this one with melee influence. In all honesty, I showcased this because I wanted to add at least one stat stick, but it can be used for normal melee. Overall, it's a decent weapon to use. Moving on to the last weapon on this list, the Anku Incarnum. The incarnate form of the Anku gives you a hefty 3 meter range, and on a successful slide attack, all attacks will inflict bleed status effect for 6 seconds. This is a successful slide attack meaning you need to hit an enemy on the slide attack. Besides, the extra boost you get from the incarnate mode like melee damage, sprint speed and parkour velocity is really strong with this weapon. If you pair this with Tenokai, the bleed ticks are strong with this one. 
The evolutions I went for are Edge of Justice, Swift Break, and Absolute Valor. This is the build that I use for this one. I know it's a 5 former build if you want to add Tenokai and a Primed mod, I'm aware, it's expensive, but this is a late game build, you can make it budget. If you want Sacrificial Steel, you have to add an extra former, unfortunately. So this is quite a former hungry weapon, but worth it. The Anku in the non-incarnate form is an MR3 weapon, so if you're a newer player watching and want to try it out, until you get the incarnate form, but I'll be honest, the incarnate form is what makes this weapon. Remember the four mods, flat damage, crit chance, crit damage, and attack speed. Then for your mid game setup, you want those exact mods, just the non-primed ones and replace condition overload with pressure point and you'll be good to go. The Anku is a really satisfying weapon to use and a fun incarnate as well with big range and basically permanent forced bleed ticks. It's pretty broken. Before we conclude this video, I do want to add some honorable mentions. The Rumblejack is the new war dagger that shreds at the moment with melee influence and gas. This weapon was suggested to me by a community member on Discord named Burst Gosling, so thank you so much for showing me this. It destroys everything and anything right now. Pairing it with some pool mechanic like Nautilus or a pool subsume, you will destroy everything. It's, it's satisfying then it will work really well. Here is the build I run for this. Again, you can make it a budget version if you want to. The next honorable mention is the Slater. Again, following the electricity plus melee influence strategy, the Slater has a unique trait doubling the duration of bleed ticks. So they are affected by bleed ticks a lot longer. And when you spread it to enemies, well, you can kill groups of them. Pairing this weapon with expedite suffering and you are going to get some serious damage. Here is the build I run for this weapon. Of course, the dual Ikko and Karnan is stupidly broken at the moment, but unfortunately, I don't have it. I didn't farm it. I know, scandalous. It is very good. If you want to go and check out other content creators, they have made a video on that weapon as well, but I could not show it in this list. And that's the video. Let me know if you agree. I tried my best to give early game alternatives for the later game weapons to allow newer players to use some of the weapons on this list. Remember, they are more geared towards Tenokai and the new melee arcanes, but again, they work perfectly fine without that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I sunk a metric ton of former for the melees, so I would really appreciate if you would hit that like button as it goes a long way for me. A special thank you to all of our channel members who helped me pay the star chart tax. I really appreciate your support. I'll see you guys in the next one.